It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this special edition of Science Bowl. The two teams you're about to meet have won once previously. One of them is moving on as the first of the four quarter finalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's meet today's teams. First from Nicholas Orr Middle School, would you say hello to Paul Oriala, David Sanchez, and Michael Blackwell. And from Thomas Pullen, would you please say hello to Brittany Linus. Deborah Amatosha and Micaiah Holder. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, our game board reflects question difficulty. The tougher questions on the far right, 15, 20, ultimately 25. Easier ones over here on the left, worth 5 and 10. We start our teams out with 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds, we will have the first of our four quarter finalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly. Let's go to the red team. David, would you try your buzzer? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, to Michael and to Paul. And Deborah, would you try the green team? Looks like a group push over there. Everybody's ready. Brittany, Deborah, and Micaiah, good luck to you as well. Congratulations on making it this far in our competition. You are elite players and you really show Science Bowl being done the way it should be done. So good to have you back. Let's have a great game. We go alphabetically N before T. So Nicholas Orm and David, let's play the bowl. Let's get physical for, for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Multiple choice question. Teams on television, there's a commercial that says, why don't you take the family out for a geological thrill? If you do that, would you go white water rafting? Would you go roller coaster riding? Or would you go cave exploring? Cave exploring. Thomas Pullen. Cave exploring. Cave exploring, yes. That, in fact, was a commercial for Lure Caverns. All right, green. Green things for 10. Green things, 10 points. Teams, in Guardians of the Galaxy, the movie, Vin Diesel plays one of these green things. Yes, David. Tree. A tree, yes. He has one line. I am Groot. Vin Diesel looks like an oak tree himself, so it makes sense to give him that role. Thank you, Mike. Go, red. Let's get physical for five. Get physical for five points. Teams, your question is as follows. Although not made up of water vapor and certainly not a meteorological phenomenon, this is where a lot of your email goes. The cloud. Deborah. The cloud. Into the cloud, absolutely right. Good, green. Science Pope Brief for 10. Pope Brief for 10 points, teams. The first organism to have its DNA sequenced was this fungus that is used by bakers and brewers to make, yes, Thomas Pullen. Yeast. yeast. Yeast, yes, brewer's yeast, and the yeast used in the fermentation of alcoholic beverages. Well done, Thomas Pullen, 75, 60 for Orm. Deborah Chews. Zoop Raid for five. Zuprate for five points, teams. Your question is as follows. It's a visual question. Look at the monitor, if you would, please. According to the song, In the Jungle, the Mighty Jungle, what feline sleeps tonight and has its name on this fish? Lion. The lion. That is the lionfish, indeed. I'm sorry. You guys are good performers. I can't sing, Micaiah. Don't laugh at me. Go, Deborah. <laughs> Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points, teams. Your question is as follows. If savory, metallic, soapiness, and fattiness are added in then we would have a total of how many basic tastes? I need a number. 
If you added in those ones I just read, how many total basic tastes would you have? David. Six. Not six, good try. If you added in savory, metallic, fattiness, and soapiness, then how many total tastes, basic tastes would we have? What you think, Deborah? I'm gonna pass this to Micaiah. How many? Give eight. me a number. Eight. Eight, absolutely right. Sweet, <laughs> salty, sour, bitter, plus those four. Micaiah can't believe she got that. That was a guess, Mr. Z. All right, green, good answer, good, go. Science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points, teams. Even though they don't spit, the babies of these tasty bivalves best served on the half shell are called spat. Clams. Clams. Not clams, good try. These tasty bivalves best served on the half shell, their babies are called spat. David? Oysters. Oysters, absolutely right. That's what we wanted to hear. Red, please. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, uh, did we already give that away with the taste? Yes, so 10 points is gone in body systems. Five points is still available, correct? As is uh, 15. Body systems for 15 and five are both available. Am I correct in that? Yes, yes thank you. I'm sorry, uh, David, please choose again. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, what lower arm bone paired with the ulna is also the same name as the distance from the center of a circle to the edge? Nicholas Oram. Radius. Radius, that's it, good. Radius in the ulna, the two lower arm bones. All right, 80 to 90, 10 points behind, Oram, go. Daylight. Daylight. In Dateline Science for 10. Dateline Science for 10 points. Teams, because our early ancestors did not eat breads or donuts or Pop-Tarts, it makes some sense that a lot of us are allergic to what protein in wheat? Thomas Pullen. Gluten. Gluten, yes, so many things today are gluten-free because we really weren't, we did not evolve to digest carbohydrates. Well done, go green. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, following the Norse tradition, in the movie Frozen, Elsa's ice palace was all shaped like this famous flower in America. Yes, David. Rose? The rose, yes, it's called rose matting in Norway. Thank you, Paul, for your assist on that. All right, what a great first round. Good playing. Look at that score right now. Nicholas Orm, 85. Thomas pulling in the lead with 100. We'll be back with more Science Bowl in just a moment. Don't you go away. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. We built the entire library out of recycled bottles. Fried ants are delicious. We finished a clinic in an arranged one. Really? That was a confidence builder. My students actually ended up teaching me. So I learned this dance. I'll show you this dance. Yeah. In la keg, a la quine. The classroom was, was more of a class tent. I think managing a sales team is tough. <laughs> Try working with five different villages. My alarm clock was a rooster. Beans for breakfast, beans for lunch, beans for dinner. We ate a lot of beans. I learned a third language. My seatmate on the bus was a goat. Always include the village elders, always. My morning commute was by canoe. After two months, I was ready to quit, but after two years, I didn't want to leave. I didn't know I had it in me. Turn two years of service into a lifetime of experience.
and welcome back to Science Bowl. Yes, indeed, the two teams here today played before, came back as winners. Today's winner goes on and becomes the first of the quarter finalists in the middle school competition. A lot at stake today. Great playing, just as we expected. Six elite students here today. Let's meet them or reintroduce them to you if you were here earlier. Let's go to Nicholas Orm first, school over there in Hyattsville. And David, your principal? Miss Maryfield. Miss Maryfield and the sponsor. You have two sponsors, don't you? Yes. Tell us who they are. Miss Rankin and Miss Odell. Wonderful. And boy, they are so excited about your success. And they're not surprised by it, though, because they've been working hard, as have you. So you've earned this success. You've made your own luck. Uh, tell me about any alternates on your team. Paul, I know, was an alternate. Who's an alternate now? Stan. Stan. And we'll bring him out with Miss Rankin and Miss Odell in just a few moments. David, uh, Nicholas Orm has a lot of science opportunities there. You've got a STEM club and you've got science fair and science bowl. Tell me what else is great about that school. Well, our school likes to do lots of sports and I believe we're first place in the county for soccer. Wow, and you're a soccer player, aren't you? Yeah, but not for the school. Not for the school, that's their loss, that's their loss. Dave, what do you want to do when you get older? I want to be a pediatrician pediatrician because I know you love kids and you want to make a difference in the world you have lots of no boy ambitions and it's nice to have you back in David was a science bowl player in elementary school it's nice to have him back in the middle school you do a really nice job Paul nice to have you here for the first time tell people the Paul story what do you do in your spare time um I build things and fix things in my house and I play sports wow what kind of sports do you like um I like basketball and soccer. And soccer, all right. And based on the t what you've told me, do you want to be an engineer perhaps someday? Uh, yes, or a cardiac therapist. Wow, okay. Uh, do you have some experience with that in your family? Um, my mom, she's a nurse, and my dad is an accountant. Yes. But um, with my experience with fix fixing things, yeah. I want I eat, my opportunities of becoming a mechanical engineer is pretty higher because not a lot of people have heart problems, mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, and the heart is actually a, a pump. It's a mechanical thing, so uh, your skills as an engineer and a doctor would come in handy if you decide to go that route. Thanks for sharing that, Paul. Michael, good to have you back. Young man who aspires to be not just an author, he wants to be a famous author. He likes to write. Uh, when did you discover that you were a good writer? Well, it's my mom who really got me into reading and writing. Yeah. She really encouraged me to start reading more and writing. And I'm sure you thank her for that every day because it's something you can do your entire life. And, and books just take you so many places that you can't go physically. Uh, is there a book that you read that was an epiphany that you thought, boy, this is just a great book? Well, not really. I just like a certain author, Rick yeah. Riordan. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and you find authors that you really like. I remember as, when I was your age, I read uh, Moby Dick, you know, about this great white whale. And it, I remember it was just, a, it, it really pulled me. It was a great story. Nice to have you back. You play a nice game, Mike. Thomas Pullen, nice to have you here. Brittany here on the first time. You were an alternate, and now here you are right on set. I'll get to you in just a moment, but let me ask Deborah a little bit about the school. First of all, Deborah, welcome back. And uh, also a returning player. She has been here in the past, and, uh, and it shows because you really are skilled. How do you know so much about science, Deborah? Well, my mom is a science teacher. She teaches special education at Charles Carroll for middle school. So I kind of get a little bit of the science from her. Absolutely, and it's kind of in the genes, I would think, too. Uh, who is the principal of Thomas Pullen? Ms. Lucas Adams. Wonderful, and she's out there supporting you. And Mr. Roy Manning is your uh, wonderful sponsor. Well, he'll be, he'll be out in a few moments. And now that Brittany's on set, who is the alternate? Or did you have multiple alternates? John and Erica. All right, they'll both be out in just a few moments. And Thomas Pullen, uh, the uh, breeding ground for great artists for many years. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's what you like about the school, that's going to give you that springboard. Yeah. It's just great. Tell me what you do in your spare time. I like to practice my violin and talk to my friends. That's just wonderful. Typical kid stuff. Make sure you're a kid. This is your one shot at it. Micaiah, you're a violinist as well. Yes, I am. And how long have you played the instrument? Uh, since second grade, which will now be about seven years. Seven years. Um, if people ask you to play something on the violin, is there something that you traditionally do? Mm, not really, no. No? I can just play a scale. I mean, have to have a set piece. Yeah, but you're part of the orchestra there at Thomas Pullman, yes. is that yes. it? And would you like to be a professional musician someday? Yes. yes wonderful, sir. wonderful. I can see you being, uh, you have a discipline about yourself. I can see that serves you well. And Brittany? 
How are you? Nice to I'm have well. you here today. Do you play an instrument as well? Yes. What do you play? I play the violin. Oh, oh, yeah. violinists over there. <laughs> and I, the uh, other members of your team, I think, are also violinists. At least one of the alternates is. Uh, what about the future? Professional musician? Um, yes, I also want to become a macroscopic chemist or a physical therapist. You have a lot of different options out yes. there. I like that. Yeah, a lot of uh, interest. Uh, tell me what you do in your spare time. In my spare time, I like writing poetry. I like practicing my piano and my violin. I also just like sitting back and relaxing and thinking about my life and my day, how it's been going so far. And you know, if you don't do that, it just goes, you know, you have to reflect on life once in a while and smell the roses, as they say. So you've <laughs> learned that early. That's just great. Okay. All right, let's get back. Good to have you here. Let's get back into the game. 100 for Pullen, 85 for Nicholas Orm. Anybody's game still. Lots of tough questions left. Good luck, guys. David, start us out. Sue prayed for 10. Zoo prayed for 10 points. Teams, a lot of people were disappointed when the National Zoo recently closed down this exhibit, named after the phylum of insects and lobsters and octopus, all these creatures without backbones. <coughs> Nicholas Orm. Invertebrates? Yeah, it was called the Invertebrate Zoo, and it was a great draw, but because of budget problems, they closed it down, and they had to give those animals away, those creatures away to other zoos and parks. Red, please. Dateline signs for five. Dateline for five. Get this, and we have a tie game. Teams, just like yellow fever and malaria, this is sus the suspected vector of a newly prominent disease called chikungunya in the Caribbean. What creature spreads that disease? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. mosquitoes? Yeah, mosquitoes, just like yellow fever and malaria, are spread by uh, mosquitoes. They are the vectors there, different species. All right, tie game, 100 all. David, please. Body systems, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, the trainer of Toothless in How to Train Your Dragon. Hiccup. Hiccup, I didn't even, you must have seen that movie. I was gonna say the spasm in your diaphragm. You were way ahead of me, David. I like that look on your face, go. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, the water in Toledo, Ohio recently became undrinkable when the simplest of green plants bloomed in nearby Lake Erie. What are the simplest of green plants, David? Pass it to Michael. Michael? Um, cherry blossoms? Not cherry blossoms, no. Toledo, Ohio's water became undrinkable because nearby Lake Erie had an outbreak, a bloom of these simplest green plants. Um. Algae. Algae is what I'm looking for. Try again, please. Uh, red. Uh, we can turn that light out, please, over there. Thank you. David? Let's get physical for 15. Get physical for 15 points. Teams, we all know that a light year is the distance light travels in one year. But one astronomical unit is equal to 93 million miles, which is the distance between where and where. Earth and the sun, Earth and the sun, 93 million miles separates the two bodies. That is equal to one astronomical unit. Try again, Red. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, catfish live in very murky water and they can't see their prey, but they are acutely sensitive to changes in acidity and alkalinity given off by their prey. Acidity and alkalinity are measured on what scale with two letters? Thomas Pullen? pH. That's it, good. Deborah, go. Dateline for science. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> Dateline for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, the first extrasolar planet found by astronomers was named Pegasus B because it was found in a group of stars known as Pegasus. What do we call those groups of stars in the heavens, David? Constellations. constellations. Indeed, constellation. The constellation Pegasus. Good. Red. The last 15. The last 15. Go. Do pray for 15. You prayed 15 points, teams. The official mascot of the recent World Cup games in Brazil. Yes, David? You rang in, you had an idea. What did you want to tell me? Thomas Pullen, the official mascot of the recent World Cup game in Brazil, World Cup games in Brazil, was this tank-like mammal that defends itself by rolling itself into a ball and surrounded by its Armadillo. More plates. Yes, ma'am? Armadillo. Armadillo. Armadillo, yes. We're getting that in triplicate. They all knew it. Good. Green. Green things for 20. 
Green things for 20 points is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Unlike most plants, the leaves of water lilies, where you see this little girl sitting, you can see how big they can get. What S initialed breathing pores are on the top side of the leaves of a water lily as opposed to being underneath? Those are, yes, Deborah. Spores. Not no, spores, no, good try. What are the S initialed pores that are found on the top side of these leaves? These are the breathing pores through which gases are exchanged. They're called the stomata or stomates. Try again green, please. Thomas Pullen? Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, what P initial term is the gunk on your teeth, the deposits? Plaque. Deborah? Plaque, yes. Also the, the deposits in your arteries and also we think the growth in the brain that uh, oftentimes is associated with Alzheimer's. Go green. 150 to 120. 30-point advantage, Deborah. Soup parade for 20. Soup parade for 20 points. Teams, Bluefin tuna, unlike other fish, can live at just about any depth in any ocean because they are homeothermic, meaning they can do what that other fish can't, Dave? Control their temperature. Yeah, they can make it warm by generating heat. Good answer, good, go. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical 20 points. Teams, when radioactive radium decays, it gives off this kind of A initial particle that has the same name as the first letter in the Greek listing of letters. Wait. Deborah. Alpha. Alpha, the alpha particle, absolutely right. Has want two protons and two neutrons. Deborah wasn't too sure about that. She said, we're gonna try. Good, 170, 140, advantage yours. Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points, teams. Face value, face value Comics now has a new comic book hero who is afflicted with this A initial condition that often makes youngsters very uncomfortable in social situations. Oh, Thomas Pullen. Anxiety. Not anxiety, good try. What A initial condition, Autism. David? I pass it to Michael. Michael? Autism. Autism is the correct answer. Good comeback, go red. Dateline signs for 20. Dateline for 20 points, score update. You are 10 points behind. This is a 20 point question in Dateline Science. Teams, recently, because these scientists who discovered a new water mite were in Puerto Rico and were listening to the music of Puerto Rican singer Jennifer Lopez, they named that water mite that they had just discovered Arachne Lopezi. That's a scientific name that has what two parts? What are the two parts of a scientific name? Genus and species, genus and species, like Homo sapiens, boa constrictor, go red. All right, we're down to all the toughest questions. Still anybody's game, David. Let's get physical for 25. Get physical for 25 points, teams, because pure gold and pure silver is too soft to make into a coin. It is often mixed with copper. That mix is what kind of A initialed hybrid when you mix met different metals together? Deborah. Alkali. Wait. Not alkali. Good try. What's the A initial hybrid mixture of metals that is often put together in coins? I pass it to Michael. Michael. Alchemy. Alloy. Alloy. Alchemy. That's a good try as well. No points. Again, please red. Science potpourri for 25. I'm Pope sorry? Potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25 points. Teams. A placebo is often used in a scientific experiment. It is a fake drug. Most people who get it don't know they have it. Since you know how to do a science fair experiment, since that placebo is being compared to the real thing, that is known as the what? Nicholas Orr. Lots of high level discussion here. David, what's the consensus? The placebo effect. No, not the placebo effect. The placebo itself is what part of the scientific experiment because it is being compared to the real drug. Pass it to Micaiah. Micaiah. Variable? Oh, good try. The control. It is the control. The test versus the control. Go again, please. Red. Still oh. 10 points behind. David, come on. Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Dietary roughage. The stuff that you eat that is indigestible is what kind of C initial kind of food that plants make during photosynthesis? 
carbohydrates, carbohydrates. This is indigestible carbohydrate. Three questions left. Come on, David, you're gonna have to earn it. Body systems for 25? Body systems for 25 points. It's a multiple choice question. Teams, thousands of Americans every year get what is called a femoral prosthesis because they have had a hip replacement, a knee replacement, or bypass surgery, David. Hip replacement? Hip replacement. Femoral meaning the femur bone. Yes, indeed. Good. Go. Dateline signs for 25. Dateline signs for 25 points. Teams, right after 9-11, people on Capitol Hill were receiving in the mail what a initial kind of bacterium that is deadly and a vaccine of which was discovered by Pasteur back in the 1800s. Name that A initial disease caused by that A initial bacterium. Anthrax. Last question of the game. Zoo prayed for 25 points. This will decide the game. Score is Thomas Pullen 170. Nicholas Orm is 185. I will warn you this last question has three answers. I need all three. Here it is. Australia is the only continent with all three types of mammals. Mammals that are classified according to the way they reproduce. Can you give me all three kinds of mammals based on their reproductive style? David, for the win. Pass it to Michael. All right, Michael and girls, make sure you've got an answer ready in case I have to come to you. Talk among yourselves. All right, Michael, the three kinds of mammals based on their reproductive styles, only all found in Australia. Marsupials, monotremes, and... Good try, good try. Thomas Pullen, can you give me all three types of mammals based on their reproductive style, all fine only on the continent of Australia, the only continent that houses all three? Marsupials, monotremes, and rodents. Wait, no, no. Oh, wait. And not rodents, Insta. not rodents, no. The last one that you didn't get was the placentals, the one, our kinds of mammals, the ones that have the connection between mother and child. That means that our game is over and Nicholas Oren by 15 points. You are our winner and our first quarter finalist. We will be back in just a moment. Don't you go away. How far would you go to help someone? Would you go to the end of your driveway? Would you cross a street? Would you cross an ocean? Would you go if you could use your knowledge to teach someone? And in the process, maybe learn something yourself. Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. Simple moments are what make every day count. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed this game. Boy, it was excruciating at the end there, waiting for that last group. Our final tally today is Thomas Pullen, 170, Nicholas Oram. Congratulations, 185, the first of our four quarter finalists. Look at Miss Odell and Miss Rankin back there. I think they're more excited than the kids. Stan, congratulations to you also for being part of this team. Paul and David and Michael, terrific job here today. We'll see you in March. And Thomas Pullen, oh, you gave it your best shot there. I thought you were gonna come up with those placentals at the end. We love you guys. You have it all together. You're scientists, you're academicians, you're musicians and athletes. Erica, 
Thanks for being part of this team. John Patrick, terrific to have you here. Mr. Manning, I want to make sure you come back next year. You are the best, the best, the best. We want to see you next time, too. We'll see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye-bye.